This episode of the Foley and James podcast is a bit of a mishmash of things, all centred around the fact that Foley has just moved into a new house in his current base of Nova Scotia in Canada. As you will hear, this is the first time that he's ever lived by himself, and we talk about that briefly before delving into some stories from both of our lives about living with people. Learn what we find to be the most annoying things that housemates do, and also some of the best pranks we've played on housemates in the past, either out of revenge or just plain boredom. Here is episode 17 of the Foley and James podcast. Are you all moved in then? Um, pretty much, pretty much, yeah. As I said, I don't have Wi-Fi or cable yet in the house, but uh, I also don't have kitchen utensils to like cook anything. <laughs> Hence why I'm eating Subway and drinking a McDonald's coffee. Why did you move anyway? I actually don't know why. You, I didn't realise you were moving house until you put a status up or mentioned it the other day. Yeah, so short version is they needed the house we're currently in for a different, more senior staff member. Oh, you're living at the school, like before as well, you were living at the school? Kind of. It was owned, it was technically a schoolhouse. It was owned by the chief financial officer of the school, and we'd have been paying rent on it and, and stuff like that. Ah. Um, now, our wages, our wages were garnished to do that, which is not nearly as delicious as it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Neither is going cold turkey. Are you are you living with people? Have you got housemates, or is it your house? Like, is it just you? Exactly. So, yes. To answer your question, yes, I'll be living alone. Um, for the foreseeable future. Now, there was. This is a weird, long, complicated one, but bear with me. There's a rule in Ontario called Rowan's Law, and the short version of what it is is that you need a, an athletic trainer, like a physiotherapist, um, someone who's certified to deal with obviously injuries, but who's has the extra certification to deal with concussions okay so you need one of them at every sporting event in ontario there's talk that it might be coming in here next year right because it will have to be moved so fast for people the athletic trainer will have to be hired and, and probably end up living with me sounds good man so are you looking for is will this be the first time you've uh, sort of lived without lived on your own essentially live without housemates yeah, yeah, pretty much. Are you looking forward to it, or do you think it's going to be weird, or what do you prefer normally? I think the summer will be weird, because obviously school is out, and I'm living on a school campus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's going to be quite uh, empty. But, no, there will be things going on, uh, going on, and like I do have a job, so I'm not going to be sitting at home twiddling my thumbs or twiddling other things. <laughs> um, so, uh, no, I'm, I am looking forward to it. It's exciting, you know? And as I said, once the new, the new windows are getting in, they're putting in new Venetian blinds. So I can just walk around naked all day long. That is the benefit of being by yourself, I'll give you that. I mean, you, you can do it when you've got housemates, it's just usually frowned upon more. But I've, I've had a lot of uh, varied experiences with lots of different housemates. So like, just for example, uh, for the amount of different flats and houses I've lived in, in the three years that I lived in Germany, I moved house six times. You know? Uh, oh, wow. So I've got a, wow. a lot of different... Yeah, living arrangements under my belt, and that's not including what I did where my living stuff for uh, my first degree, you know, in England and stuff. So yeah, I've got a lot of positive and negative experiences with housemates. I assume you've got the same. Have you like how many different sort of living um, arrangements have you had? <clears throat> well, that's the thing. So like, grew up, you know, uh, physically if not mentally, <laughs> and in um, at home on Hillside in Westport, and then I went straight off to college, straight to England to uh, Greenwich and uh, lived in a flat. I don't know if I told you that story. So I got there and obviously we have the three different campuses. And when I, when I landed, I, said I would have had to go and live on the Avery Hill campus, which is in somewhere down there in Southeast London. That's not Greenwich. But we got there and just out of curiosity, we went to the admissions office at, at uh, Midway or the housing office or something. And we're like, look, I know uh, I was talking to you on the phone, blah, blah, blah. Is there any, any uh, chance something has come up? And they go, no, 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 sorry. So, oh, hang on, wait a minute. <laughs> and uh, some guy called Paddy Foley had dropped out of living in residence. <laughs> so I got his flat. <laughs> was that... <laughs> like, was, that's insane. That is ridiculous. Is yeah. that so that was really cool. And then, so yeah, I lived there for the first year of university. We had, had my own flat, single flat, my own bathroom. We had a shared kitchen and common room. Um... Lived with mostly nice people. Uh, two, there's two girls and two guys. There's only five of us in a six-person flat. One of the f uh, flats was free, I think. I can't remember why, though. Right. Yeah, that was my first year. And then my second year, moved into a house with, uh, you know, one of the rugby guys and then two people from his course. 
through that year, one of the other rugby guys essentially lived on our couch for half the year. <clears throat> that was a case. That was good. That was a lot of fun. You know, I was kind of nervous about living with random people for a change, you know, because you always hear the horror stories. You never hear the stories of everything was absolutely fine. And then in the, that guy that lived on our couch in that, that year ended up moving in with us uh, the following year because one of the guys had to move home because he couldn't afford to live uh, there where he was living. Uh, then I finished there and then went up to second university up in Yorkshire and again same thing I landed on the plane and uh, I had nowhere to live <laughs> so I had gotten a voicemail while on the plane you know because I had my phone off like a good person uh, when the plane is in flight and um, <clears throat> the voicemail was saying uh, somebody dropped out of halls and because you're international we'll move you up the list so you've got a place <laughs> Jesus, that's I know, what yeah. were you gonna do? What was your plan? I I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> live live in a hotel for a week and then try to find somewhere, I guess. Yeah, I did the same thing when I first moved to Germany. I was in a hostel for uh, two weeks. Actually, it was just because I had I had I actually did have a place, but it was a uh, like a holiday home. It was a summer apartment, but for the winter semester they rented it out to students. And I was living there with two people that I had never met before: one German and one Bulgarian. But then after six months, I went and moved. I moved like flat, just because we were only let, we were only able to stay there for the winter time, as I mentioned. So it was coming to summer, and there's no way I was paying fifty euros a day. So I went and got a student flat with my friend. Uh, it was six of us in there, and there was so three guys, three three guys, mm. three girls. I think it was. One of the guys, he was like the laziest person you can imagine, and me and my friend, we'd always we'd always fuck with him because he. It was hilarious to prank him because he we had a, in our kitchen we had like um, like a, a sofa and a big TV, and so he would lie down on the sofa on his back, sort of with his hands behind his head, you know, with elbows sticking up, and um, he'd fall asleep watching the telly, and we'd walk in every day and he'd just be asleep in the kitchen watching the shittest TV, and what we we just stopped fucking with him while he was asleep. And I remember one time it was the funniest stuff. We um we got a couple of bottle caps from like beer bottles and put one on each of his nipples, and then yeah, <laughs> we got a an oven glove and slid it over his elbow oh. like so it was like pointing out you know and there's an oven glove slid over his elbow, and we were just feeding mm. a wooden spoon, uh into his other hand when he woke up, <laughs> and like and when he realised we were fucking with him he got so angry because he wasn't necessarily our friend you know he wasn't like our enemy mm -hmm. but. We weren't, you know, we weren't that close and stuff. So he was, he just got so angry that we, he was like shouting at us, oh. and um, he like wrenched the spoon out of his hand and took the oven glove off, and he was like threw them at us. He was like, "What the fuck are you doing? You're, you know, it's hilarious for like uh, messing with me while I'm asleep." We started pissing ourselves laughing because there was this, this, this small angry dude shouting at us with two little bottle caps on his nipples. <laughs> <laughs> he hadn't seen them on there, and because they were like perforated, when they when he stood up, they like caught onto the cotton, so he let stay on his nipples. <laughs> it was brilliant. It was brilliant, and we we did used to bully him though a little bit because he um he had his first ever girlfriend when he lived with us as well, and she was from his hometown, so she wasn't actually in Constance itself, and they would like have an online relationship, you know, they Skype all the time and stuff. Okay. And um. One day we found that he'd written a love letter to her. They'd been going out for, I think, ten days at this point, And he'd written a love letter to her. Oh, God. And it was like how he wanted to have kids with her and how he wanted to marry her. And oh, it was like, Jesus. yeah, it was full. Of, it was like all in, full on stuff. And um, what we decided we were going to do is like try and lighten the mood a little bit. So we, the next time he was Skyping his girlfriend in his room, we could hear him, you know, through the door talking to her. Is we, yeah. we went into his room, just like knocked on the door and went in. Oh no, wait. Yeah, knocked on the door and went in. And he, because he wanted uh, uh, to introduce her to us anyway, because he was really happy, you know. And so he knocked on the door and went in, and he was like, oh, these. <laughs> I told you she's real. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's probably part of it. But um, he was like, oh, these are my housemates and stuff. And all we decided to do is we were going to walk in and, take, and get naked. <laughs> so, oh my so God. we walk in there. He's all he's all happy to introduce his new girlfriend that he's inexplicably smitten with after ten days, and we just got uh, yeah. yeah we just we got naked there. So that was funny. But yeah, have you ever had anything like that with housemates? Like just to like fuck fuck with. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, like <clears throat> um, we used to prank 
uh, one of the guys all the time. He'd, he'd say a similar kind of thing. He'd fall asleep on the couch constantly. So we'd just like start stacking, up, stacking stuff on top of him. One of the best ones, though, we used to, even when he wasn't asleep, <clears throat> you'd have like a, a container of Parmesan cheese in your hand. And you just like, every time you'd walk by, just like sprinkle a bit in his hair. <laughs> to see how much you could get in without him noticing. That's brilliant. What did he do right. when he woke up and, like, and the stuff started falling out of his hair? He just like got angry and then started beating up one of us. <laughs> you know, like me- messing, obviously. But yeah, the, we did. Uh, we left a load of foliage, like not anything of me. <laughs> it's not an adjective of gonna, me. <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> Although I might start using it. <laughs> you should. Oh. <laughs> um, so yeah, just a load of like trees and leaves. I left lo- uh, all of that in his bed once. What happened? Well, I was away one night, and I came home the next day to find my, like my mattress was flipped up. I had a BB gun, and all the like the little pellets were strewn across the floor. You know, there was stuff taken out of my wardrobe and thrown yeah. everywhere. That kind of stuff. Like, it was just the lads messing about. There was like hair gel on the wall and random crap like that. So. I was quite hungover, so I didn't get angry. What I did, I just tidied absolutely everything up, made it back perfect, and I went to lie down in bed, had a nap. About 20 minutes later, the guys who did it came up, and they were just like peeking their head in the door, and they're like, oh, oh, you know. And then they came in, and they came in, and they were just like, hang on, did we, did we, like, do something in here? And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's It's been perfect. Well, you know, I came back and nothing had changed. <laughs> so I just flipped it around and fucked at them for about half an hour. Because <laughs> they, they legitimately great. didn't think that they did anything. They, they were like, <laughs> we, we were drunk. I thought we did it. Did we not do it? That's amazing. <laughs> I did yeah. something along those lines. In my very first year at my, at my first university, uh, I lived in a flat of six. It was like ensuite rooms, but you shared a kitchen. Mm. Um, and yeah, there were six of us in this flat. And there was one night everyone went out. I was a little bit ill, so I didn't bother. And so I was the only one who stayed in. And the two girls that we lived with left their doors unlocked. And huh. like our flat was like the party flat. It was we. You could walk in there at any time of day, including the morning. And there'd be people in there drinking, and most of them wouldn't live in our flat. You know, it was yes. like it was just that's where people gathered. So. We very quickly learned, like, lock your doors, at least. You know, people can mm-hmm. come and, like, chill in the kitchen. That's not a problem. But they will fuck with your stuff if you leave your door open. And the two girls left their doors open and went out for the night. I was the only one left in the flat. So I decided oh, it would be funny to swap their rooms around. <laughs> so I, it took me about four hours. And I did it meticulously. I, could put, I took all the stuff out of one room and put it in the other room, but in exactly the same place as it was. <laughs> so nice. that it was like a mirror almost like a mirror image of the room and um, they came back in and the two girls I should say were like on opposite ends of the personality spectrum as far as <laughs> one was like proper like a laugh like a bit of a tomboy but really funny like really yeah, good yeah. banter and stuff the other one was a bit uptight and a bit protective about her stuff you know all this stuff and I heard them come in about I don't know two or three and all of a sudden, there was like there was shrieks of like laughter from from the one, and then like screams and cry. I didn't expect it to be such a bad reaction, but like then the one who took it the wrong way, she like properly started crying and banging on oh my, my door God. to wake me up, and she was like, "Get out here now and change it over." I was like, "It's three in the morning. I'm not changing. It took me four hours. I'm not changing it over now." And she was oh like, God. "You do it. You do it now, or I'm going to security and I'm going to tell on you." Blah blah blah. And so I was like. Yeah, go ahead. I'm not doing it. It's three in the morning. So she went to security and like gave them my name and stuff. And I ended up getting putting on a final warning for uh, <laughs> getting kicked out of halls. But it was it was hilarious. So I swapped the rooms over and also uh, like cling film the toilet seats. Yeah, yeah the, the usual. Know, a couple of <laughs> the usual standard things. But that nice. it was that was so funny. That was so yeah, funny. That is, I love it. I love it. Yeah, we um and when in my second university again living in halls, we'd the kind of we had a similar thing where. It was like, if you left your room open when there was people drinking in the kitchen, you were like, nobody was liable for what went on, <laughs> you know. So we had like, there was spare mattresses as well in, in a room. <laughs> like in, in our flat, there was just a flat, an actual flat that wasn't been used, like a, a bedroom. And there was like three or four spare mattresses in there. So of course, I took an extra mattress. So because I had two mattresses just because they weren't the most comfy ones anyway. 
And then <clears throat> I think one of the girls did as well. But it got to a stage over for about two weeks. Every time we could, we'd go into the other person's room and take one of the mattresses. So we'd, we'd have three mattresses. And it would just go back and it went back and over for about four weeks. It was, it was hilarious. And then eventually we just like brought them all into the kitchen, sat on them, lay on them, drinking for the night. <laughs> <laughs> just to like hash That's out fast. the peace deal <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so you've actually moved a lot like how have your your moves been i was only it was mostly happening when i was in germany so i didn't have much stuff you know i basically just had a like a big hiking backpack full of whatever i took over originally so i didn't have many things and because i was a student and i was only going to be living there for a finite amount of time I only like looked for places that already had furniture so I didn't have to worry about buying my own stuff and then transporting it and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. So it worked out quite well and uh, it's not that I've been moving house and getting removal vans and moving all furniture and stuff. Like, I mean, like you've had to move furniture. I haven't had to ever do any of that stuff. Yeah, that's good. Um, that's good. But it was sort of once every six months I'd have to move just because I actually only ever had sublets and they were always ah. sort of six months out of go, and that's why I was moving so much. Yeah. The only time that I finally got my own room that was mine as long as I wanted it was the very last one I had, which was uh, one of the shortest ones I was in because then I got <laughs> a PhD and got sent back to England. So it's really unfortunate. But uh, have you ever had problems, or I don't know, with like slutty housemates? Have you had problems with them, or do you like play pranks on them and stuff? Because I've got, I know. Uh, this isn't one of my housemates that this happened to. It was actually a friend of mine. I went to visit him in Exeter, in the south of England, uh, for his birthday. And a friend of ours, actually, Foley, went and met us over there as well. And we all went out. And his housemate was, like, really loose. Uh, and she would always bring home a different dude and stuff. And uh, down in uh, Exeter, I think there's, like, a Royal Marines base or something. Because she kept, apparently, bringing back Marines. And the, the night that we went out, um, she brought back two Marines with her as well. I, I don't know if like she met them out or if she knew them and rang them up or what, but she brought these two dudes back who were both in the in the in the in the Marines and um, in the Navy. Me and my friend who were visiting Exeter, we were both crashing on the couches in the front room. Uh, and so fine, we came in, a bit drunk, and went to bed, whatever. I woke up the next day. Like, really early. You know when you're crashing on a couch and you just always wake up early, even if you've been drinking? And you can't um, really get back to sleep all the time, yeah. Yeah, so I woke up like that really, really early. And I sort of looked up at where, you know, my I was expecting my friend to be where he, you know, where he was sleeping. And there was just a Marine sitting there looking at me. just, <laughs> just And I didn't know where my friend had gone. And um, it turns out what had happened is that my friend had gotten up in the middle of the night looking for a toilet and uh, got lost along the way and whilst looking for like the living room on the way back to get back to his couch he stumbled upon a bedroom that wasn't being used so he just crashed in that bed and uh, then this marine apparently so yeah the girl had brought back two marines to have a threesome with them which they had done and this marine was just chilling out watching me sleep which was really weird and it was, <laughs> it was really strange it was really kind of like homoerotic because he'd had this devil's threesome with this girl then he'd come down and he was watching me me asleep whilst watching uh, WWE. <laughs> it was on the TV. Okay. It was kind of weird. It was kind of a weird combination. The, the The thing was though, what we found out like then throughout the next day is that one of the guys, like one of the people who lived with her, had gone into her room for some reason during the day, and found that there was like brown stains on the walls and stuff. Oh. And it wasn't just like a regular threesome. It was a, like everyone had been fucking everyone, essentially. And it was oh, just, geez. it sounded Gosh. really dirty. Yeah, it sounded really dirty. And um, yeah, not the nicest thing. So I was wondering if you've ever, ever had anything like, like that before. It's like as far as, not you, but I mean, mm, like housemates. No, nowhere near that level anyways, no. Um, <laughs> no, and, and I was probably, I was, uh, I was probably the one bringing back all the strangers all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so... But uh, definitely nothing ever to that level. Jesus. Did you ever break the sacred rule of, uh, ne you know, don't shit where you eat, you know, never sleep with one of your housemates? Or have you always had male housemates? Yeah, I've pretty much almost had male housemates, so um, only only twice have I slept with any of them. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, <clears throat> no, other than the two girls I was living with this year, yeah, it's like it's been all uh, all males, really. Well, I guess in my second university, um, there was some girls there, but um, yeah, it was never a case of, no, I, I didn't shit where I eat. Yeah. What What are the most annoying things you've ever had? Like, 
It's like because for me, I don't like uh, I don't like note writers. Oh, the so, passive I mean? aggressive like, twat. Yeah, like the mm. yeah exactly. Or people who write their names on their food, shit like that. Yeah, well, we we had a bit of an issue with that this year, but that was I I actually didn't mind when it happened. Like it wasn't me. Uh, you know, there, there was I think it was confusion as much as anything, rather than deliberately stealing food kind of thing. Um, but right. uh, yeah, yeah the, um, I don't think so, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> what's the worst thing? Just like general, uh, like sloppiness. You know, I'm a, I'm a relatively clean, simple, easygoing person, but like, clean up after yourself. You know, yeah, that for sure. One of the things, right? What are you like with uh, washing up? Like, as far as what's your philosophy on, like, so you don't. There are plenty of people that will just do like save the washing up to the end of the day, right? You don't have to do it after every meal. But like, I have a real problem with people who put their dirty dishes in the sink, even if they're going to clean it up later. It's still like in the way. In the way of if I want to, but I don't know. Put, fill up the kettle or something. I can't do that now because there's a bowl in the sink. But like, it seems to be really stamped like fifty fifty. Like, a lot of people th- find it worse if you put it to the side of the sink. And yeah, rather than no, in the I'd, sink. I'd, I'd, like, what do you think about if, that? If if I was doing that, I'd definitely put it to the side. Um, but in, like, even if I'm cooking a big meal, I'm a kind of clean as you go kind of person. So if I right. use something, I'll uh, I'll at I'll, I'll minimum I'll run it under the tap, and then leave it, and then give it a proper clean once I've finished everything. But like that's minimum. I'll never just cook, 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 and then leave it. That's incredibly rare that I do that. <clears throat> and if then yeah, if yeah, I do, I was just wondering about leaving it under the sink because I I swear no, I find that annoying. So many people do that. Yeah, and I don't. It just doesn't make sense, you know. No. But anyway, that's just my little gripe. <laughs> no, 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 de- um, definitely. Like one of the guys we lived with in uh, in university in in um, Medway, <clears throat> he had like a stack, like it was a foot and a half high of dishes, dirty dishes in his room, and Jeez. um. We need them, you know, we're having a few people over for food and drinks, whatever. So we needed them all done. <clears throat> he just came down and just left them there, like expecting us to do it. The first time we were in wow. such a rush, a rush that we did it. He did it again, like a couple of months later, and so we just left them back up outside his door. <laughs> yeah, we did some we did, we'd, we've done exactly the same thing actually. We did similar well, basically what you said, it was just like stupid amounts of piles of uh dishes in a flat where you just there wasn't a space for it and it was shared dishes so like we needed them as well it was like pots and pans and stuff for cooking and so yeah. we rather than you know the first couple of times it was like oh we'll just assume that she forgot to wash them or whatever so i need to use the pot so i'll just give it a wash it doesn't really matter and i'll use it but it was a regular thing and uh, it started to take the piss a little bit so we, we did exactly the same thing and just left it like in we put it in her in her room yeah. Sort of on a bed type thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, this this year, uh, <clears throat> um, it was what I found so annoying. So like, I'd buy specific things, like a big, like a deep bowl. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, just so yeah. I could mix stuff in it, and it wouldn't be falling off the sides, obviously, and, and crap like that. And then I found it so annoying when <clears throat> I, I've no problem people using it. Absolutely no problem. What's mine is yours, kind of thing. I'm pretty much like that with everything. But Jesus yeah. Christ, wash it up after yourself. <laughs> yeah. like, if I need it, you know, because I specifically bought it for a couple of certain things, I don't yeah, want to have to go and fucking wash. wash. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That annoys me. Definitely. We had uh, another solution to that in my first year of uni. Like I said, it was the party flat. So we just had like all sorts of people there all the time. And they would bring like food from their flats down to like eat it with the group and everything and then just leave the plates and stuff. So we would end up, oh yeah, we ended up with like mountains of dishes at the end of every sort of week, you know. And they weren't mostly ours, like anyone in the flats. And we weren't going to wash them up, partly because they weren't ours and we were 18 and there was like, that doesn't really matter, you know. And um, it was uh, it was one of those flats where it gets cleaned by the university once a week. But you have like a kitchen inspection, and if it doesn't meet the standards, then you can get fined. And but all they would check was just the surfaces, essentially. So they they poke their head in the kitchen door and just look at the kitchen as in general and see if it was fine. So what we did is we put everything dirty, but just in the cupboard under the sink, and piled it up there. And we just did that for weeks because it wasn't our <laughs> stuff. And we and we just kept adding to it and adding to it. And then it got to a point where I don't know I don't know if people 
stop bringing stuff down or there was no more crockery to bring down because we had it all under the sink or what, but it just stopped happening and we forgot about it for a few <laughs> weeks or maybe maybe even a couple of months. I can't remember why, but one of us went under the kitchen sink and like sort of went, oh my God, what's that? And there was like literally 10 centimetre thick layer of this like furry cloud shaped lump of mould that had grown on top of this mountain of dishes it was disgusting that is and we also had some uh, some bananas that had been chucked under there because someone had bought some bananas and then didn't eat them so they just threw them in with the dirty dishes for some reason in a plastic bag those bananas had also like putrefied they'd gone all mushy and like to a liquid and it was just fucking horrible and there was no way we were going to touch it because it, it had gone so far the, the wrong way that we just there was no it was beyond like help you know yeah, so what yeah. we ended up doing was we saved them for like for you to use as pranks and there was one flat above us that we hated because they would always uh yeah like tell security on us for having parties and stuff and so what we did one night is we went and like got that putrefied banana mush and like smeared it all over their door handles and stuff <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and we also actually, in a side note, another th- prank we did on that flat, the ceiling of their corridor was like, you know, you in like an office building or something, it's not like a plaster ceiling, it's those kind of like foam square tiles that you can kind of yes, push on. Yes, yes, you know, yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm looking at some right now. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, and it, so it was like that. And we, we went to the supermarket and bought a fresh fish, a full, like a full <laughs> fish. And we, yeah, you can, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know where this, this is going. going. We yeah. went in and we pushed up one of the tiles and put it in the ceiling of their, uh, yeah, of their corridor. And I swear to God, like for three months, their corridor stank of fish. Mm-hmm. And they didn't know where it was coming from. Of course, why would you look in the ceiling? You know? Exactly, yeah. And it was horrible. And then just eventually the smell went away. And they didn't know what it was. We just assumed like, I don't know, rats had eaten it or something, you know. Yeah, yeah. Fast forward to one year later, this has oh, been Jesus. forgot, long forgotten. Like no idea of about course. it. But there was those people had moved out, and it was a new bunch of like first years in there, mm-hmm. and they had a party, and we went along along to that. Throughout the night, at some point, someone I think we were having, uh, you know, I don't know what it's called, but where you have like someone sit on your shoulders and you like wrestle against someone who's doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And. Um, we were doing that, and someone's like head went through, the, like knocked one of the ceiling tiles, <laughs> and this, in, still in its full shape, there's just the skin of the fish fell down onto the floor. Jesus! Like all of the all of the insides, all of the bones that have like just gone, but the skin was the full shape of the fish was still there, and it just like floated down like a feather. It's fucking horrible. <laughs> That's bizarre. And landed on, and we were like, oh my god, you know, <laughs> that's the fish. <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. That is bizarre was, though, that like just the skin was left. I know, I would never have guessed that. No. I would never have guessed that. <laughs> but yeah, that was funny. Uh, we had one of our housemates, one of our one of our housemates would uh, spend most of his time at his girlfriend's house. He wouldn't really stay at ours much, and so one of his friends would use it as uh <laughs> would use it as his place to like fuck random girls on an after a night out. And it wasn't, you know, with the guy's permission either huh. as far as the guy whose room it was so he'd come back eventually after a few days and we'd be like yeah this guy's been fucking in your bed again and he'd be like oh fuck's sake <laughs> <laughs> and it got, to, <laughs> it got to the point where we had to put a lock on the outside of his own like bedroom door in a, and this was in a house now this is just yeah, in a yeah. normal house and he had to put a lock on his own bedroom door Rest just to enough. stop people fucking in it when he wasn't there <laughs> oh I love it love it love it but yeah, man, so you're almost done with the move now. Yeah, as, as I said, like all the kind of the, the big physical stuff is moved. Um, so last night was my first night sleeping in it. It was warm. I don't have an aircon unit yet. So, um, warm! Yeah, very. very <laughs> kind of hot in these rhinos. And um, <laughs> yeah, so, and as I said, like no Wi Fi or no cable yet, but that'll, that'll be done in the next week or two. I'll go decorate in my room soon and. Uh, I'll have all our photos up, so you'll 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 be on the wall, man. Oh, <laughs> you, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, although, like, it's it's either you and me or it's just you, me, and Hannah. It's not. I, I there's no just one of you. <laughs> That'd be weird. <laughs> just with, with a heart shape around it. <laughs> yeah. When I move in uh, with my girlfriend, I want to like, 
you know, get a few sort of photo collages or posters or whatever together, you know, so like 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 that sort of thing, you know, yeah. just to sort of decorate yeah. it. Exactly. Well, if anybody uh, anybody that is listening to this, if they have any like free artwork or furniture, feel free to donate it to me. <laughs> I won't say no. Or mirrors. I want a few mirrors for the house because there's like one in the bathroom <laughs> and that's it. That just to make yourself feel not as lonely, like when they when you get a mirror for a budgie. All right, guys, so we're going to leave it there. Um, I'm not sure there was a moral to that story, <laughs> or any of those stories. Um, but uh, we're still currently on YouTube, but very, very, very soon, um, we are going to have an announcement about a change of name for our podcast, and then eventually, hopefully, a change of platform for our podcast. So we'll be on uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, Acast, all of those things. Um, you can find myself and James on Facebook. You can find us both on Twitter. I'm at OCR Cove. James is at Tweet Belsey. Uh, I'm also on Instagram. OCR Cove is my name there. I'm also on Snapchat. Crazy Axel. Um, one like one thing, guys. You know, if, if you could like this, share this, subscribe, retweet, all of that kind of stuff, we'd really, really, really appreciate it. Um, and comment on it. You know, let us know or comment to us whether it be via Twitter or Facebook or on the YouTube channel, whatever, you know, like, let us let us know what you like about it. Let us know what you don't like about it. Um, although if one of those things that it's only on YouTube right now, then we understand that and we're, we're in the process of fixing it. So um, I think that's about it. Uh, oh, and also, guys, if you have any uh, topics you'd like us to talk about intelligently or otherwise, uh, let us know and, and uh, <clears throat> we'll get around to them. Or if you have any, you know, questions, if you're looking for advice from our year two well-traveled and well-experienced guys here, um, we'd be happy to help <laughs> and um, hopefully give you guys a laugh along the way as well. So unless uh, James has anything to add to that. That was lovely. Thank you very much. All right, guys, we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.